Oh, here comes a sick one. G'day and welcome to another episode of The Hold Down. I'm your host, Ronnie Blakey, and joining me as co-host is a man with 25 years in the game. As a surf journalist, he also claims to have passed 43% of the Women's 1993 Championship Tour. No one has substantiated those claims, but he stands by it. Vaughan, how are you? Good, thanks, Ron. And uh, a landmark year for women's surfing, mate. Thanks for bringing that up. A landmark edition of the Hold Down coming your way too. We're gonna be counting down the top five moments from the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach, the biggest surf festival on the schedule for the Championship Tour. And it's just a special event to be part of every season. What makes it so? Absolutely everything, Ron, to uh, answer your question. Anyone who's ever been down to Bells at Easter knows just how good that comp is. Everything about it has a little bit of magic that you can't quite quantify with just uh, explaining it. You really have to be down there and, and be a part of it. But things like, you know, getting down to the beach and you hear Hell's Bells echoing out over the lineup. The history of the event, it's the longest running event in the world. The parties, the Easter Bunny, everything's awesome. It's literally cannot get in the mood quick enough when I think about Bells, mate. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. And I think one of the great things about Bells Beach is just the trophy. It's so oh, iconic. And yeah. uh, we've got one here. It's a runner-up, Bell. No harm in giving it a little ring. Oh, go on oh, Good luck, excuse yeah. me. But uh, it, it really is one of the most sought-after mantelpieces there is in surfing. The iconic nature of it is only backed up by the legendary, you know, Yes. If you ring the bell and you haven't won it, then you'll lose a tooth or uh, the surf will go flat for five years or who knows what will happen. But it's definitely got that, uh, that title of best trophy in surfing. Everyone wants it. As a result, it has an incredible honour roll. Who are some of the names when you look back on the history of this comp? Everyone who really matters in surfing has won this thing. I think in the professional era, kicked off with the great Michael Peterson winning three in a row. Uh, Mark Richards, he won a handful. Andy Irons won a couple, uh, Sonny Garcia, Mark Ocalupo, Harco, Mick, everyone who matters in surfing seems to have rung this bell. Uh, that's on the men's side of the draw. The women's is, a, is another just list of legends as long as can possibly be. So yeah, No Kirk has won it, as Shane Dorian famously said, and it's just, you know, it's, it's the comp that I think outside of maybe the Pipe Masters is the one that everyone really wants to have in their sort of career highlights. I think it's time we ripped in, Vorno. Let's get stuck into it. This is our number five on our classic Bells Beach moments. Check it out. Five. Number five is the women, because the Rip Curl Pro and the Easter Bells Rally have delivered some of the best female performances we have ever seen in the history of our sport. Without question, and the honour roll, like on the men's side, is stacked with some of the greats of the sport. And I think that we've got to give special homage here to Gail Cooper. Ten Bells titles, that's oh, just remarkable. Legendary, the most winningest winner of them all, men's and women's. Her house must look like a church rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally stole your gag. Don't yes. worry, mate. It's yours. Take it. A lot of multiple champs, in fact. Lisa Anderson claimed plenty of victories there in the past four, I think. And it, it just became one of those sought-after titles for the women because the wave really suits their surfing. But in recent times, the performance levels have gone to a whole new place. Totally agree. I think uh, with the women's tour over the last few years, we've seen it sort of disconnect from the men's tour and then come back in line with it. And it does seem like the events where the men's and women's are together and you get to enjoy the whole experience in one big contest setting. Women surfing lifts and we have seen Carissa Moore, Steph Gilmore, Silvana Lima, just some of the great Bell's performances in the last decade. Yeah, Carissa Moore in particular for me has had a couple of waves in the last few seasons that I think have to go down as the best waves ever ridden by a female with a contest jersey on. The ability to hold that rail from the top of those big tall walls right down into the bowl and just flow without losing any speed into the next turn is sort of unparalleled really and a lot of people have said that she could easily win heats in the men's competition. I know that that's uh, not a comparison that people like to make but I think it's true. What does a Bell's title mean to these women? I think Silvana Lima would probably be the best person to ask because when she won the Bells title, the first Brazilian to do so, she went out to a tattoo shop 
and got herself a huge new sticker of the Bells Trophy right here on her side. Pretty yeah. amazing. Way better than getting a giant tequila worm on your back. <laughs> 100%. But uh, big congrats to the women, always pushing the boundaries down there at Bells. We know for a fact they'll be doing that again when they hit the lineup at the bowl Can't next wait. year. Bring it on. Stay with us because after the break we'll unveil number four on our list here at the Hold Down. Oh, here comes a sick one. Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Hold Down, and today we're breaking down big moments from the Rip Curl Pro at Bells Beach. Right now, we're going to dive into our number four on the list. We're going to wind the clock back, way back to 98. And it was an emotional year, Vorno, because Mark Ocalupo, in his comeback to championship tour form, got himself that breakthrough win. Oh, man. My heart is about to explode just thinking about it because Oki had been in the wilderness. Everyone knows where he went. He had hard times. He'd fallen on, you know, a real difficult period in his life. Everyone wanted to see him back. He was a world title contender in the early 80s. He started making his comeback in the late 90s. Here comes the Ock after blowing everyone's minds at the Super Skins a year earlier with the best backhand surfing maybe ever seen. Still, to this day, could it be? I think it is. And then, you know, by the time he got back to Bells a year later, everyone wanted it. Everyone wanted to see Ocky ring the bell. He put in some of the greatest heats ever out there, the current uh, semi-final from 86, all that stuff but it was just his time and nothing was gonna stop him. And even the crowd knew it. Yeah, it felt like in 98, everyone knew who they were going for. Mark Ocalupo up against, who remembers? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> it was Shane but, Dorian, but I was Dano. Yeah, Shane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely the crowd pulling for, for Oki in that one. But fast forward a, a few years, it's gonna bring up our number three moment here on the hold down. Marco V. Fanny, 2011, the 50th anniversary of the Bell, right there at Bells Beach, pump and bowl. A really classic event and two icons of surfing that wave. Two guys who know it back to front on any swell, in any condition, in any tide. It's the trickiest wave on earth. These two guys know how to read it and the final was set up as one for the ages. Joel Parkinson's taking on his childhood friend Mick Fanning in the final. But the conditions, they're a big part of this story as well because it's one of the bigger years that we've had for Bells. That's right, Ron. The sea was angry that day, my friend. It was big, it was lumpy, it was in the bowl, and only the guy who connected the best with that type of surf was going to come out the victor. As it turned out, both guys were on a mad tear, but one of them was on the extra mad tear, that extra little bit. Feels like Joel Parkinson when the conditions get like that, a little big, a little stormy, a bit tricky, he really shines through and that was the case in the final. He just looked to be on. Every time he stood up on his board, he was cutting through the chop, no dramas. Mick had great rides too, but you could tell that the, the conditions were affecting the lines that Mick was able to take out there. For sure. Parko's uh, rail work just seemed to be a little bit more drawn out. He was able to pull his board through the chop. I don't know if he was on a slightly bigger board or what was going on there, but. When you watch footage of the final, you can even see Mick just looking for opportunities, whereas Parko's just finding it all so smooth. Mick pulling off one of the great inside closeout floaters to uh, you know seal off a ride there. But then right at the very end of the final, Parko back out in the lineup, drops in, uses priority, gets a 10 point ride. That's how you finish off the 50 year of Bells. Even a little tube, couple of big snaps at the end. Glory days for the man who really is one of the best bell surfers ever. One of the great finals that we've ever seen unfold there and one that Joel probably thinks about every night oh, when his wife it. is uh, tucking him into bed. So uh, yeah, congratulations <laughs> there, Parco. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to uncover our two big moments in the Rip Curl Pro history right here on The Hold Down in just a moment. 
Oh, here comes a sick one. Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome back to the show. We are loving running through the big moments from the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. And we've got another huge one here for you now. One of the most pivotal moments in the sport of surfing. This is your number two. Two! 81, the year that changed surfing, doggy. This was the year that everyone headed to Bells, looking to get their world title campaigns on the way. And what do you know, the surf turns up. Not just any old surf, the 50 year storm. The one from Point Break, the one they talked about. <laughs> That's the one, Bodie was there. Mate, no one was ready for the surf that bombarded the surf coast that year. People were freaking out. No one had the right boards. There were people trying to actually hire out Hawaiian style guns to the touring pros who didn't bring any boards. So it was on, it was big, it was beautiful. And the man packing the secret weapon was Simon Anderson, the third fin. He was taking what Mark Richards had done, brought the manoeuvrability, brought the control and the drive back to it, and he had the ultimate platform. 18 foot faces at Bell's Breach. You have all that drive, all that control. He absolutely minced the place. And a lot of other guys were kind of struggling. There were still great performances, don't get me wrong. But Simon was just uh, in another place. With the, the placement of his boards was just next level, right in the bowl. You can just see when you watch the old footage that Simon is completely surfing. Like everything isn't about holding on. He is really moving all over those faces. And that board really allowed him to do that. And the crazy thing about that contest is, he was the only guy on it. I mean, everyone else was riding singles, maybe twins. I don't know who would have been riding those things out there. MR, probably. I mean, he did ride them to four world titles, so he was probably backing himself on the twins still. But, mate, it was just incredible. And what people don't really even know, Ronnie, is that Simon didn't win in those conditions. He actually beat Shane Haran, who was the crazy hot dogger and probably the best high-performance surfer in the world at that time. Beat him at like three, two, three foot mushy little ring con days later. So the thruster really proved itself in a range of conditions. And later on that year, Simon would go on to win the Pipe Masters on the design as well. So that was the end. Everyone was like, get me on one of those things, I'm done. And nothing's changed. Everyone's still pretty much riding thrusters. Occasionally you see a quad in the mix in, in the modern era, but for the most part, everyone kind of sticks to that, that design. And maybe one of the, the big stories is that the technology was never patented and uh, Simon never really benefited the way he should have, other than a life of obviously great surfing. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, hard to uh, really imagine how he sleeps at night. <laughs> Probably pretty well. Yeah, no, he would. He's had a great surfing life, Simon, and you know, it's not a design that hasn't gone acknowledged. He may not have the, uh, the dollar in the bank for every single third fin that's gone on a surfboard over the years, but he's definitely lived a wonderful surfing life and it will always be the guy who brought the thruster into the modern era. So many other big moments from that year, uh, 81, that's why it rates so highly for mm. us. For sure, and I think, uh, you know, when you look back at it, every single surfer who was there, everyone who tells stories about it, it's just a, a glaze comes over their eyes and they're just transported back to that day because it was really rare and still is really rare to have waves that size that are just offshore and perfect and the world's best surfers all over it. It will live forever as the yardstick to which all other bells have to stand up to and rightly so. But it's still not our number one mark. No, it's not. From the Rip Curl Pro at Bells Beach. We're going to find out what it is right after the break. You're watching the hold down. Oh, here comes a sick one. Oh, here comes a sick one. Oh, 
Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Hold Down. We're going through the big moments from the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach and it's time to uncover our number one. And it was always going to be Kelly Slater and Mick Fanning, the most epic final that we've seen at Bells Beach. Maybe one of the most epic finals we've ever seen in the history of surfing. I agree. There's one thing you want to see when you think of elite sport, and that is the Goliaths, the big daddies, punching it out one-on-one, -on -one, wave for wave. Uh, whether that's tennis or whatever, I know they don't surf in the tennis court, that's fine. Catch the waves, you guys. Open up your minds a bit. But Kelly Slater and Mick Fanning, two guys at the peaks of their power, Kelly really fighting for uh, relevance in the face of like all this young push coming through. Questions about his retirement even back then, it seems ridiculous now, but what he did in that final and then how Mick matched and bettered that, incredible. Before we dive into the vision though, let's set the scene because mm. it was a special year down there at Bells Beach. Earlier that year, the late, great Michael Peterson had uh, hung up his leg rope, he passed away and before the final, because Michael had a great relationship with Bells Beach. Before the final, they had the whole crowd stand on their feet and applaud for a minute. And Mick and Kelly were out there in the lineup applauding themselves as well. And it was just a, a real buzz in the air. Oh, mate, it was rapture. And no waves broke. It was just pumping bells and it just sort of settled down while everyone celebrated the life of that three time Bells winner, the first guy to even win in the professional era, Michael Peterson. And then the second that bell went, uh, the hooter for the start of the final, hell's bells echoes out over the lineup and just tingles everywhere. Everyone was buzzing off their chops, I tell you. And uh, what followed? Just an absolute spectacle of primo surfing, flawless, two very different approaches going down. Mick sitting out there like the ice man that we've come to expect just wanting those perfect sets. That's all he wanted. He wasn't gonna stay busy. Kelly, meanwhile, just doing laps from even Rincon back to the bowl and everything. Mick, Ron, you might remember, it was just flawless surfing, start to finish. He made no errors whatsoever. Did a couple of top turns that were just, yeah, just so good. And then Kelly really needed to pull stuff out of the hat and didn't he what? Oh mate, it was awesome to see, wasn't it? Yeah, Mick, going the, the traditional approach to Bell's Beach, as you said, those big, beautiful calves, all the style in the world. But Kelly, when he got his back up against the wall, went to the inside, stalked out a closeout section and threw something at us at Bell's Beach, which we hadn't really seen before. And uh, the, the air's been coined, the Kellycopter. The Kellycopter. It was a full rotation air by a 41-year-old man with no hair, flying out into the channel and just straight onto his feet, stomped it flat. And I remember sitting up in the uh, grandstands watching that exact moment with uh, Steve Kay, who was working for Rip Curl at the time, and he said, what do you think that'll score? And I said, mate, you are not going to like it. And I was right, because it was a 10. It was a 10 all day and uh, you know what Mick actually said when he got back to the beach, that air was so big and Kelly had so much time in the sky that as he spun through the rotation and Mick was out the back, they locked eyes for a moment <laughs> and then Kelly kept spinning, stomped the air and uh, it it's probably stands out as one of the greatest turns in the history of the sport. No doubt, but you know, in the end, Mick Fanning did what he had to do to get it done. He took that bell. And then as just this last moment of poetry, a full stop, an exclamation on one of the great comps that we've ever seen. After the presentation, when everyone had packed up and gone home, this tornado come flying around the Bell's headland, flatten the contest site. And there's this walk of fame. If you've been to Bell's, you would have seen it from the car park down to the contest site where every single winner who's ever won the Bell features on this giant fence and that tornado knocked every single one of them down, except for MP. You do the math. Yeah, eerily awesome, but it was a fantastic contest. One of the great finals that we've ever seen. Obviously, it really did sort of light this uh, rivalry fire up between Mick and Kelly. Uh, they battled a few times in the following years uh, for world titles. and. And that, that was epic. And there was one point in the final too where I think Kelly tried to get a little conversational with Mick before uh, <laughs> things kicked off. Good luck. And uh, Mick didn't buy in, just iced him and then went on to win the final as well. A great day. A great day for Australian surfing, a great day for surfing worldwide, a great day for MP and a great day for surf fans.
Yeah, one of the great rivalries, Kelly versus Mick. Thank you, lads, for uh, putting it all on the line down there at Bells Beach. Cheers to Rip Curl for the Easter Pro. We love it, and we'll be back there next year to watch it all go down. And we hope you join us again next week because we'll be running through more big moments in the sport of surfing right here on The Hold Down. <laughs>